Paul. Hello, Lee. How are you? Welcome. He's meeting military historian and soldier Dr. Paul Knight. For the winter of 1915 into 1916, nothing particularly big is happening for the battalion that your great grandfather's part of. And then they move down to here. And they're moving down here, ready for the big push. This is the uh, 1st of July, 1916. This is the first day of the Battle of the Somme, and your great grandfather is right in the middle of it. Wow, he was actually in the Battle of the Somme. Absolutely. This is a map from uh, July, 1916. This blue line here, this is at the British front line, where the blue line crosses the road. That's where we're standing at the moment. So we're actually on the British front line? We're on the British front line of the 1st of July, 1916. So he's almost literally on this spot? Indeed. Yes. Wow. So this would have been oh, a big trench? Yes. And across the road is the French army. The French artillery, they have a lot of heavier guns than the British army have got access to. You want to be next to the French? You do want to be next to the French um, on a day like today. And all the red, that's all the German positions. This is Dublin Trench, and this is your great grandfather. It's an objective. Their target was to get from there to there. Yes. It's about 1,100 metres up this road. So 0730 in the morning, and the infantry attacks. Your great grandfather, he's in the third wave that attacks. All the soldiers would have been issued rum to steady the nerves. So they're basically getting a bit tipsy before they go. A bit of Dutch courage. So roughly 7.30 a.m., my great granddad is here going over the top of the Yes, top. across this field in front of you. All right, so you should be able to recognise what's on the screen. Well, you, well, that's this map. So that red dot, I'm assuming, is is that where we are now? That's exactly where we are now. Right, so if, if I move, that will move with me? Yes. This is incredible. So using this, we can follow Billy Mac's footsteps going into no man's land. Absolutely. And he definitely did it with an iPad. <laughs> Let's go. OK. I mean, it is, it is incredible to think that my great-granddad was actually doing this. Yes. So he's now in no man's land here, isn't he? Yes. I mean, what is he look, what's he seeing? Well, there have been masses of men left and right all moving forward at the same time, as far as he can see. So he's in the middle of, of this big movement of men. So I'm picturing barbed wire. Yep. I'm seeing sort of smoke everywhere from the, yep. from the lots of, artillery. Uh, yeah, lots of artillery fire. So there's still the shells going overhead. There'll be the machine guns firing to support him. Smoke has been fired onto German positions to try and stop the Germans from see, seeing the attack. And it's so um, counterintuitive. If you see a man in front of you fall to the ground who's been shot, yeah, yeah. the last thing you think is, I'll run in that direction. Well, a lot of the accounts are say, saying that they, they are walking forward. Why are um, they walking? It's to control the man. And also, when you get up there, you don't want to be exhausted. So everybody gets in the German trenches at, at the same time. Blimey. So we're very close now to the trench that he was trying to get to. Is the idea to get in there and kill these soldiers or to capture them? Either. Both. So if they surrender, good. If not, he'll go in with the bayonet and he'll um, you know, shoot people if needs be. That's what he's been trained to do for the last two years. But this could be the first time he's had to do that. Well, probably, yes. And he won't know how he reacts until he's in that position where you've got to do it. Take somebody else's life. Oh. It's, a bit, uh, it's a bit of a sobering thought. Right, so this is it. The red dot is on the trench, so yeah. this, this is his target. Yes, so your great-grandfather, this is his objective. The war diary says weak resistance, but also we do know that 300 of the Germans are captured. So he would have been responsible for capturing them and taking them back to the village? Very possibly, yes. So we've got one more thing to show you in the village. Shall we go and have a look? Let's have a look. Lee has come with Paul to the village of Montebon, which before the battle, lay behind German lines. OK, so here's another thing for you to uh, have a look at. Ah, the Liverpool Pals. Yes. 17th, 18th, 19th and 20th battalions, the King's Liverpool Regiment. My great-grandad being in the 17th, of course. Yes. To the glorious memory of the Liverpool and Manchester Pals, who, as part of the 30th Division, liberated this village 1st of July, 1916. So, after Billy Mack and his pals got through those trenches, they liberated this village? Billy Mack's action is out in the fields where we've just been. This is a team effort, so the fact that he secured the section out in the fields allows other battalions to advance on the village. This is immensely successful and very, very few casualties. So, that's the first day of this push. Yeah. But how long did the whole thing go on for? Well, the Battle of the Somme runs on until November 1916, and uh, Billy Mack would, would have been out here and fighting th throughout that whole period. A couple of weeks apart, there'll be another battle. Blimey, all righty. Yes. So we've got something else to show you here. OK. This is the uh, account by his uh, commander, F.C. Stanley. Yes. 
If we turn to page 177, we've got to start reading from there. I have hardly made any mention up till now of our entertainers, the optimists. Mm. Ah, yes. Billy Mack and the optimists. Indeed. So it mentions in the summer of 1916. So that implies that they were performing here. Yes, that's incredible. Lee wants to know more about Billy Mack's act when he was performing at the front with the optimists. To find out more, he's traveling north to Belgium, just outside Ypres, following in the footsteps of his great-grandfather who was sent to this area with his regiment in the summer of 1917. Freezing. Hello, Rebecca. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Can we sit down? He's meeting historian Dr. Rebecca de Monte. So, things to discuss about my great granddad Billy Mack. We are literally just a few miles away from where Billy Mack was fighting in the Battle of Lys, and I've got an account of uh, his time in the battle uh, performing with the optimists. In the afternoon, the optimists, undefeated fellows, gave an outdoor concert in their ordinary and very mud-stained clothes. The concert was a great success, both with our own men and also with the French troops. I found that gobsmacking that it says, gave an outdoor concert in their ordinary and very mud-stained clothes. Ordinary being but they're, they're, their uniform. uniforms, absolutely. Literally. Yeah. Oh, the same day as walking off a battlefield. Yeah. So the very morning of the performance, there was still a battle going on, and Billy Mack was part of that. And it was a very bloody battle, a very difficult battle, with lots of people who were killed. But that's unbelievable. To actually be shot at, or perhaps have killed someone, and then walk on, on the stage. Putting on these performances became a way for them to normalise their experience. It helped... Uh, people feel more sane in such a, a, a complicated and difficult situation. It's not just a bit of fun that the, the, the people at the top thought, if we can keep these soldiers entertained and distracted, it might be better for everybody. I think it was a complete lifeline. I'm thinking of my great granddad, Billy Matt, thinking, is it, what's he going through? Because he's, he's not watching this performance, he's in it. Yes, and it wasn't just that they were putting on a performance uh, in a ready-made theatre, this was actually happening on the front line. So you could see all the trenches uh, around them. That's incredible, isn't it? It is incredible. Wow. What kind of comedy was Billy Mac doing? I mean, I'm guessing it wasn't observational stuff. I bet he didn't say a funny thing happened to me this morning. And they went, yeah, we know we were with you, mate. It wasn't funny. <laughs> Pretty horrific. So the kind of humour that there was could be very dark. There was a, a story told about a soldier walking along one day in the trenches and finding a cap, and he kept scrabbling down and eventually found, found a soldier underneath that cap, buried in the mud, um, and he said, ''Oh, no, are you all right?'' And the soldier said, ''Yes, I'm absolutely fine. I'm just worried about the driver of the bus that I was standing on top of.'' <laughs> and obviously a lot of... let me write that down. <laughs> A, a lot of people were buried alive in the mud and, and died that way. So this is a way then to use uh, comedy as, as, a, uh, as a release, as a way of dealing with that very difficult yeah, situation. Yeah. Take a look at this. Ooh, the intrigue. So what have we got here? We've got two postcards. Ah, and that is the optimists. Wow. The big question is, is any of those people Billy Mack? Oh, my gosh, that is him, I think, in the middle. That's right, it is. That is Billy Matt. That is amazing. And another one. Far left. Wow. Yes. To see him in the Optimus like that, you know, get a sense of it. And there's, oh, there's writing on the back as well. There is writing on the back. Yeah. One of the many concert parties travelling about near the front line. They are the best I have seen so far. That's a good review. It is very. And there were hundreds of concert parties at this time, so it shows the high esteem in which the optimists were held. Well, that is brilliant. I'm so impressed with that. And it also... You have video footage of it. <laughs> no. The big question is, is, did they stay together? After 1918, there is no other report that we can find of the optimists which suggests that they've broken up or, or gone their own way. Oh, maybe Billy Matt was the... Robbie Williams of his day and said, sorry, lads, I've got my own tours to do. And then Billy Bray went, hang on, I'm coming. 